Magna Carta loophole gullible taxpayer law, in case of twice paid tax credit deficit dollars, the budget will balance itself. The commitment needs to be uh, a commitment to grow the economy, and the budget will balance itself. To Honorable John Oliver, thank you for reviewing my whistleblower affidavit that the Crown now questions the wisdom of trillion dollar cost of money for billion dollar tax credits hidden from the Treasury not reported in the budget. Since 1215 in the Magna Carta, the, because only Parliament can impose taxes, Parliament will not impose taxes, cannot impose taxes before the government tells the House of Commons how it plans to spend that money in the next session. The speech from the throne is a constitutional requirement before the budget is actually passed. The problem with the budget in our country is there's a sleight of hand that goes on. Our, our expenditure needs are 280 billion. We're going to have revenue of 240 billion. Therefore, we need to borrow 40 billion, and that's our deficit for the year. Well, that's not true. They collect or could collect a lot more than that, but then they transfer back to taxpayers. They transfer back money in tax credits, and then they say we have 240 billion. We need to spend 280. But they could have an intelligent debate on whether or not they want to run a 40 billion deficit or shave the tax credits and run a balanced budget. And so that's a very nasty sleight of hand that's going on with our budgetary process, which I, we say is unconstitutional. You can get the last question. Uh, well, my question is about tax arbitrage. Criminal bankers. <laughs> the American journalist, um, Mike Kinsley, put forth the doctrine that the real scandal isn't usually the illegal things people do. It's the things that are fully legal. And that is certainly true with respect to tax sheltering and overseas tax sheltering and tax sheltering by uh, financial institutions. Tax shelter, tax arbitrage is, comes in forms that are mind-numbingly complex. Tax shelter TS007385 is a $5 million rent encumbered mortgage on commercial real estate selling rent loss tax credits as an investment that gullible taxpayers signed wind bill mortgage credit default swaps and blank demand notes subsequently rubber stamped with a bank logo and filled out for an unnumbered bank loan that couldn't be sold or defrauded without it. The bank denied the loan dependent wind bill that a judge ruled for the bank to clear debt without trial and to dismiss counterclaims against the promoter collecting the mortgage credit default swap wind bill and cross claims which were presented in another court that ordered the tax credit wind bill paid in cash twice over. Secret Commission pre excluded bank loan offside loans closings started tax credit cash flow billed as mortgage partnership invoices that gullible taxpayer tax credit savers paid some 15 million LIBOR interest behind income tax revenue shortfalls not reported in the budget over the 10 year rent incumbent mortgage term until rent withholdings triggered its failure and wind bill in default. Failure to renew the $5 million rent incumbent mortgage triggered credit default swaps to collect tax saver signed wind bills repaid once in default inside a $10 million REITs property flip the bank rebuilt for resale in capital markets while collecting tax saver signed bank loan demand notes in default as well as tax saver signed wind bills sued in dishonor for taxpayer acceptance to honor another $5 million payment in cash which is the twice paid tax credit wind bill conversion theory. I have no doubt that there are tens if not hundreds of billions of dollars that should be collected uh, by the world's fisks that are not um, because of the kind of tax arbitrage activities uh, that you describe. Money changers charge rent-seeking bank interest on fictitious bill principal collected through retail and investment bank accounts until tax arbitrage rebuilds tax credit paper conversions for cash in central bank accounts hidden from the Treasury not reported in the budget. A universal bank transaction control number and double entry accounting will check retail and investment bank tax credit transactions in central bank balances. It will help our tax authorities enforce tax laws and combat tax invasion. The other part of the challenge which goes hand in hand with this whole uh, uh, banking fraud that's going on is against the Minister of Finance and the budgetary process.
Hoffman is underestimating Gulati in his latest fight over the Bank of Canada's business. His cases can seem improbable. In this case, what is your hope? What, what, what changes uh, post the ruling that you're hoping for? Right. My, my hope is that the, the court declare that the government is bound by the legislation and cannot simply hand over that decision making to foreign private bankers. Parliament can be, they can be as nincompoop as they want, so long as they don't inflict constitutional violations. Very, very sure. Thank you. I, I know, but that's, but that's the law. However, that's not the case before you. The case before you is that there is an executive breach of a constitutional requirement by the Minister of Finance with respect to the budget process, and that as a result, the legislation that comes out of Parliament breaches the constitutional right to no taxation without representation. Why? The MPs are blindfolded. So, my submission to you is what could be more important to Parliament's functioning than the debate about the budget, the process of the budget. And that's why in our Constitution, very clear, in, 18, uh, in the Constitution 1967, that it, 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 um, that it must be in the, in the House of Commons. So in, uh, in blunt terms, you're telling me a Parliament wishes to act in an incompetent way, that's, that's up to Parliament? Well, uh, your Lordship is certainly using blunt words. It's not for me to say whether... Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pitching it in a hypothetical. Yeah, yes, exactly, exactly. That's right. I, I, I would prefer that. As an officer of the Crown, I would prefer that. Is um, The way our Constitution works is they make the laws. Once the laws are on the books, it, uh, our judiciary scrutinizes them for conformity with the Constitution. But, but um, wisdom is not something that... Wisdom of legislation is, is not in the bailiwick of, of courts, as I understand it. So if a, if a bill comes before Parliament and uh, the information is, uh, is defective, I mean, there's not enough information there to make a meaningful decision, the remedy is what you're telling me? Is, um, well, I, I guess the remedy is this, is that um, we have um, elections every um, I, at least five years, the, the Constitution mandates, so the remedy would be is that people would vote in uh, a party that would uh, pass a different law. So you're saying if Parliament wishes to pass legislation without having the full where with all the full knowledge of what that legislation is all about, that's okay? That's up to Parliament because my next point is that Parliament is supreme in its deliberations. That's true, but uh, once again, I, your, bottom, your bottom line, I think, is you're telling me if you have a problem uh, with what occurred here, your, your complaint should be to your representative and not to the court. Yes, sir. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's, that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah that's, that's my submission. The systems that we're talking about are currently legal. We, we see that, though, the implications of these structures uh, create a, an unequal playing field. So we don't think that they're fair. What we're trying to do is make sure that people that are getting their income through a typical salary that they might be earning are not in a situation that's worse off than someone that might be able to use a private corporation to, uh, to sprinkle income among family members or to turn regular income into capital gains. So uh, what we're really doing is, is closing down loopholes which in my tax shelter small print is a rent paid mortgage backed security secret loan dependent tax credit note that I signed as a tax credit maker to offset rent paid cost of mortgage interest income tax losses in revenue shortfalls for 10 years until the mortgage value to a loan in default when the mortgage holder billed tax credit note principal contingent liability from my private account as the tax saver signee and the discount note holder for value rebuild the same tax credit note principal paid on public account due to my signature signed as a taxpayer. Which is Magna Carta loophole twice paid tax credit deficit dollars. Neither the 2015 Magna Carta nor the 1882 Bills of Exchange Act defines law for bank control. And in 2016, the Federal Court of Canada ruled against trial of tax arbitrage that the government still issues tax credits to banks that profit from financial ruin and notional national debt.
Canadian judges have questioned the wisdom of government banking and tax accounting and reporting in this Magna Carta loophole documentary made in September 2017 for my Member of Parliament John Oliver to present as public input to the 2017 budget process. On private members' bill for gullible taxpayer law to close the Magna Carta loophole, that after 800 years of trust in no taxation without representation in principle, we need a bank system-wide transaction control number that the budget will balance itself. To Honourable John Oliver, thank you for reviewing my tax whistleblower affidavit that I reported my role as a gullible taxpayer to the police to investigate. After 12 years in Superior Court and six more in Federal Court, the judiciary defers me to you about the law. I am glad in all fairness our government is closing tax loopholes, but as discussed and this sworn witness about twice paid tax credit win bills, I still require you to represent a private member's bill for my gullible taxpayer law. Thank you, Tony Crawford.